Hello students, today we'll be running an experiment on preparation of nuclear, mitochondrial and cytoplasmic fractions. Introduction, all eukaryotic cells contain organelles that perform specific functions. Cellular fractionation is a technique that enables the researcher to separate and isolate bulk quantities of organelles and other cellular components. Once isolated, the functioning of the cellular constituents can be studied more easily than within the intact cell. Fractionation begins with homogenization, which involves the disruption of the cells by mechanical shearing, ultrasound, osmotic shock, or detergents such as SDS. The process releases the cellular organelles, which can then be separated from each other by centrifugation. Centrifugation at low speeds causes the sedimentation of only the largest and densest of components. These components can be collected and the unpelleted portion or supernatant can be centrifuged again at higher speeds and for longer duration to pellet successively smaller and smaller components. Once isolated, the components can be assessed for purity by light or electron microscopy and their biochemical activities assayed to determine structure or functional relationships. In the following exercise, you will fractionate red liver cells to isolate cellular fractions enriched in nuclei, mitochondria, and cytoplasm. The fractions thus obtained will be checked for purity using Western blot with antibodies for glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, also known as GAPDH, histone 3, and cytochrome oxidase 4, or COX-4, which are specific for cytoplasm, nucleus, and mitochondria, respectively. GAPDH is an enzyme involved in glycolysis which is abundantly present in the cytoplasm. Similarly, histone proteins which are specific for nucleus can be used for confirmation of the nuclear fraction. COX-4 proteins exclusively present in the mitochondria can also be used to confirm the purity of the mitochondrial fraction. In materials required, we'll be requiring red liver, which is placed on ice, sucrose buffer, large petri dish, scissors, razor blades, micropipeters, homogenizers, beakers, cheese cloth, centrifuge tube of 50 ml capacity, microfuse tubes, polypropylene tubes, SDS page apparatus, 30% acrylamide solution, APS, TMED, Western blood transfer apparatus, PVDF membrane, Rabbit GAPDH, H3, and COX4 antibodies, mouse anti rabbit HRP conjugated antibody, TBST buffer, and ECL. In the procedure for cellular fractionation, first, we'll discuss about the homogenization of red liver. In the first step, samples of fresh red liver was perfused with ice-cold sucrose buffer, which is 0.15 molar sucrose, 5 millimolar magnesium chloride, and 0.01% NP40 detergent, 50 millimolar NaCl in 10 millimolar trish buffer of pH 7.1. 20 ml of ice-cold sucrose buffer was taken into the 90 mm glass petri dish and around 2 gram of the red liver was taken followed by chopping the tissues into fine pieces using scissors or scalpels. The tissue is rinsed thoroughly twice more using 20 ml of buffer. After the final rinse, 15 ml of buffer was added to the tissue to obtain a tissue buffer ratio of 1 is to 5. In the second step, 
The suspended tissue is taken and homogenized on ice until no further lumps of tissue remain. Approximately 25 passes of the pestle may be required. 10 layer of cheese cloth previously pre-wetted with sucrose buffer was placed over a clean 100 ml beaker. The homogenate is passed through the cheese cloth into the beaker maintained on ice. The homogenizer was rinsed with a further 10 ml of ice called buffered sucrose and passed through the cheese cloth into the tube. The cloth was squeezed to remove the remaining fluid from the tissue fragments. You should have approximately 20 ml of tissue homogenate with a tissue buffer ratio of 1 is to 10. In the next stage of fractionation, we'll discuss about differential centrifugation. First, the chilled sample was transferred from the beaker to a 50 ml tube. After balancing pairs of tubes to equal weight, the sample was centrifuged in a pre-cooled centrifuge at 4 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes at a speed of 600 G. The supernatant was transferred, taking care not to resuspend the pellet into a fresh, clean centrifuge tube. Secondly, the pellet is resuspended in the centrifuge tube using 20 ml of sucrose buffer by gently agitating with a pasture pipette. After recentrifugation at 600 G for 10 minutes, the supernatant was discarded and the pellet was resuspended in 6 ml of ice called sucrose buffer. This fraction is the nuclear fraction. In the next step, the supernatant obtained during the previous step was centrifuged for 20 minutes at 10,000 G. The supernatant obtained after centrifugation was transferred into a fresh ice cold tube. This is the cytosolic fraction. Next, pellet obtained from step 3 was resuspended in 10 ml of ice cold sucrose buffer. This sample is the mitochondrial enriched fraction. Finally, we have three samples, the nuclear, mitochondrial, and cytoplasmic fractions. Now, for evaluation of the cellular fractions by Western blood, first, Proteins of all three samples were resolved according to their molecular mass by SDS page. The resolved proteins were then transferred to a PVDF membrane using Western blotting apparatus. Next, using a scissor, the PVDF membrane was cut to obtain strips of the transferred proteins of cytosolic, nuclear, and mitochondrial fractions separately. Now, after blocking the membrane with 5% skimmed milk, the cytosolic fraction was incubated with antibody of GAPDH, nuclear fraction with H3 antibody, and the mitochondrial fraction with COX-4 antibodies for two hours with gentle rocking. Next, unbound antibodies were washed with TBST, followed by incubation of all the three strips with secondary antibody, which is mouse anti-rabbit HRP conjugated antibody, for 45 minutes with gentle rocking. Again, unbound secondary antibodies were washed, followed by addition of ECL to detect bound antibodies. The bands were then observed with a gel documentation system and photographs were taken. In the results, after Western blood analysis, a single band of 17 kilodalton for COX-4 was obtained with the mitochondrial fraction. A 37 kilodalton band for the GAPDH enzyme was obtained with the cytosolic fraction and a 17 kilodalton protein corresponding to histone 3 was observed with the nuclear fraction. In conclusion, 
after lysis of the cells of red liver and subsequent fractionation by differential centrifugation, the cytosolic, nuclear, and mitochondrial fractions were analyzed with western blot to detect specific proteins that are exclusively present in the three fractions. GAPDH, being a cytosolic enzyme involved in glycolysis, was observed in the cytosolic fraction. Similarly, specific proteins such as histone-3 and COX-4 were observed in nuclear and mitochondrial fractions respectively. The use of western blot with specific antibodies is a confirmatory assay for the purity of the fractions obtained by differential centrifugation. The obtained fractions can then be used for other experiments as desired by the researcher. Thank you.